Hi, this is Kevin Trainer, and welcome to my a tutorial on how to start the Django Girls tutorial on Windows 10. And uh, this is a recording that's going to be pretty specific to the people who were in my IS 439 uh, course at the University of Illinois. Uh, so, if you're a YouTuber and you found your way here, you're welcome to stay, but this is going to be pretty s specific to the way we're doing things for our course. Okay, so uh, the first thing is uh, we need to find our way to the uh, tutorial page at the Django Girls uh, site, and to do that we want uh, to go to the URL tutorial.djangogirls.org and we'll come to a page where we choose the language. Now, um, I, have a, I have a lot of international students in my class who might be, um, who might be interested to try one of these non-English uh, pages, but I'm going to warn you off of that. Um, uh, Django Girls is a volunteer organization, and uh, most of the volunteer effort goes to the U.S. English version of this um, uh, tutorial. And then, when they bring that up to a new release version, then uh, the, the people who are the translators for the Django Girls organization, who are all volunteers, well, they uh, translate this new version uh, as uh, time is available. So it's entirely possible that uh, one could um, pick one of these other language pages and get an old version. Okay, so we don't want to do that. We want to go to U.S. English. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, here. Okay, um, okay. So uh, uh, there's there's a lot of stuff here that you can read if you're interested. Okay, but uh, we have pretty specific circumstances, so I'm going to walk you through what I think will work best uh, for you as a, a member of our uh, course. So you can certainly look at the introduction. Installation has to do with installing software on your computer. Now, we've already done that. How the internet works, well, you're welcome to read that. Uh, introduction to the command line. Um, the Django Girls organization uh, teaches their workshop all over the world. Um, to people who are well-to-do and people who are of modest uh, means. And especially for the people who are of modest uh, means, um, they're not in the position to go, you know, buy software that you have to license. So this uh, tutorial um, is really expressed in terms of uh, tools, for the most part, uh, command line tools. Uh, that are all free and will be free forever. Okay. Um, by contrast, in our class, we're using um, uh, PyCharm uh, Professional, which which is a paid uh, product, but free to us because we're part of the university. Um, and that's going to make things go a lot easier and faster. So you're certainly welcome to... Uh, use the command line tools that um, that are talked about here at the Django Girls uh, tutorial site. But I recommend that you use our tool set that we're using for the course so you can get proficient with those tools as soon as possible. OK, there's some stuff here about introduction to the command line. Um, there's nothing we have to do here, but uh, we are going to do a couple things at the command line. So if you're not uh, comfortable at the command line, you could spend some time there. Uh, the next thing, uh, Python installation. We've already installed Python because 
as a prior activity in Anaconda, we built a virtual um, a virtual environment for this project. Okay, so in the current semester, uh, that's spring of 2022, that means that we're going to be working with uh, Python 3.8.2, and we're going to be working with uh, um, uh, Django 3.2.5. In future semesters, we'll probably be using a different uh, combination. So um, you may be playing this, and you're going to have to go look at uh, whatever tutorial we use to build the virtual environment to find out what combination that we're using in the current semester. Okay, so you don't need to do the Python installation. It's uh, the, the Python that we need is in our virtual environment. Uh, code editor. We don't need to choose a code editor because um, if you're using the tools from our class, you're going to be using the PyCharm code editor, great editor, um, already there for us. Introduction to Python. Uh, if your Python isn't strong, you might want to take a look. What is Django? I think that's worth a read for everybody. Django installation. Well, again, we installed Django uh, when we configured the virtual environment for our project, so already done. Okay, we're really going to begin with your first Django project. Okay, and your first Django project, uh, let's see if we can make this a little, a little bigger. Yeah. Django project. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a Django project. And in this sense, we're uh, talking about uh, a Django project being a directory structure that's properly named and has the proper sub directories and files in it. Okay, and um, this. Uh, this uh, version that they're showing here at the Django Girls site is uh, pretty close to what we're going to have. Um, the The top level uh, directory is going to be called Django Girls. Okay, within it, we're going to have uh, manage uh, .py, which is a which is a utility script for our project that we're going to make a lot of use of. And then we have a directory called my site. Okay. And it's got, um, it's got a bunch of uh, metadata and configuration files. So this uh, directory, uh, sometimes I, I call it the metadata directory. It's probably more appropriately, appropriately called the configuration uh, directory. Okay. Now, one of the things that's kind of unique about uh, the 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 uh, conventions that they're using in the Django Girls uh, uh, tutorial is that the name of this configuration directory is not exactly the same as the name in um, as uh, the name of the project uh, directory in. Uh, most of the projects that we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to find out that when you create a new Django project using uh, PyCharm, these two uh, directories are going to have the same name. Now, is that a good convention? Well, it's confusing to beginners to have have a directory within a, a directory and the names are, are the same. I think that's why the folks at um, Django Girls like uh, calling this uh, this uh, configuration sub uh, directory my site. So for the Django Girls uh, tutorial, we're going to follow the Django Girls uh, way. Right, so the top level directory is going to be called uh, Django Girls, and then this sub uh, directory, the configuration sub uh, directory, is going to be called My Site. 
Now, one of the things that we're not going to have is we're not going to have a sub uh, uh, directory the, uh, called my VN that holds our virtual environment. Why is that? Well, because if you follow the detailed instructions at the Django Girls uh, site, they have you creating your virtual environment with um, uh, an older school product called Virtual Env. Okay, and Virtual Env works just fine. Okay, it's not uh, it's not part of Anaconda, so it's not using the curated distributions of Python packages that we get from the makers of Anaconda. But another shortcoming that it has is in this configuration, they're showing the um, the virtual environment files inside your Django project. Well, we need to zip up our Django project files and submit them to Canvas, okay? This creates way too big of a zip file, okay? So for uh, practical reasons, we're not going to do this, okay? So we're not going to have our virtual environment files inside our, our project. And also, um, we like the virtual environments that are created by Anaconda because hmm, of all the good qualities that the Anaconda uh, uh, platform has. Okay, so this is going to be different for us. Okay, so uh, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to find a place to put this project and then we're going to have to create it there. And we're going to create it at the command line. Now, why are we going to do that? Well, it's easiest if we want to create a project that's called Django Girls that has this uh, configuration sub uh, uh, directory that has another name. We're going to need some command line magic. Uh, okay, so we are going to do it at the command line. Okay, so let's go, let's start looking in Windows here, okay, and see what we're going to do. All right, I have a Windows 10 virtual uh, machine, which I just updated um, yesterday, so it should be an uh, up-to-date uh, copy here in the spring of 2022, uh, uh, okay. So, uh, we're going to begin at the command line, okay, and what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to want, uh, we're going to want a command line window uh, that uh, is connected to Anaconda. Okay, so if you did my Anaconda tutorial and you followed along, maybe you have an icon down here in the taskbar uh, that is the Anaconda prompt. And you could just click on that and it'll open up. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, the command line window that is uh, sort of Anaconda enabled. And we know it's Anaconda enabled because this base in parentheses, that's the base Anaconda virtual environment. So it shows that that's what's active. Okay, so let's say that we don't have that, okay? Well, then how are we going to get the right window when we need to work at the command line? Well, if we go to the bottom left to start, okay, in this... Um, in this list of, I don't know how I did this, I, I somehow I, I lost the, uh, uh, the sort of A to Z uh, directory. So let's uh, do it again. Yeah, here's the A to Z uh, directory. We're looking for the grouping called Anaconda 3. Mine says Anaconda 3 64-bit. If we go over to the right and click on the little... Uh, a, a triangle, uh, we can see that uh, the thing that we're looking for is Anaconda prompt. 
Okay, so end of prama is going to give us a command line window. Okay, now if you're a person who wants to work with uh, PowerShell, I guess you use this Anaconda PowerShell prompt. That's not what they're using at um, uh, the Django Girls uh, tutorial, though. They're using um, the equivalent of Anaconda prompt. So let's click on that. Okay, and then we're here. Now, the first thing we're going to need to do, and you may have already done this, you need to pick a place in your file system where you're going to be keeping the projects for this uh, course. Okay, and um, my uh, directory scheme here is a little different because I'm in a virtual uh, machine, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the directory. I'm going to look for doc the documents subdirectory and you can see I'm there. And then I think I need to go to yet another documents um, uh, subdirectory. So CG change uh, directory documents again. No, it's not there. So if I want to do a DIR, I can see what's there. Well, that, now that looks like what I want. So uh, 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 I'm already there. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to make a uh, directory here. And of course, you could do that with the file explorer ahead of time, but here we're gonna do it at the command line. Okay, and we're gonna do a uh, make uh, directory, mkdir uh, space. And then we're going to, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin with three underscores. So it, it sorts to the top of whatever list you're in. And then I'm going to call it IS439 underscore uh, projects. Okay. Okay, so we made that. And now we have to change to that directory. CD three underscores IS439. Uh, projects. Okay, so if we do uh, directory, DIR, we can see that there isn't anything in here. These are just the pointers to the parent directory and things like that. Okay, so we don't have anything yet. Okay, so I'm going to go uh, back to the Django Girls uh, tutorial. And it tells us how to create a project on Windows here. OK. And it's a little bit unclear, uh, but we need to create a directory called Django Girls, all one word. OK. And then we need to make that the current directory. And then we need to put in a uh, a command that's going to configure the directory. So even though I find it hard to know where it tells you to create this Django Girls uh, directory, trust me, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Okay, so we can just uh, do it again with an mkdir, a make directory, space Django Girls, all one word, and pay attention to your spelling don't uh, you know don't make it django grills okay and then enter okay all right so we have that and then let's um i wonder if i can make this type a little bigger let me try a control shift plus no uh it doesn't make it bigger that was interesting. OK, so here I am. So I uh, I made the Django Girls uh, directory, but I, I didn't I didn't uh, change it to it. CD Django Girls. So now it's the current directory. We can see it in the prompt. Now we're ready for the. Now we're ready for this. Uh, command that's going to generate this uh, directory structure under uh, Django Girls and um, 
initialize the project. Okay, so we start to copy right here where it said it begins with django-admin.exe. And then it says start project my site. And then you might miss at the end it says space period. Okay, you have to copy all the way to that. So we're going to uh, right click uh, copy. And now we're going to go back and um, I click uh, down here at the command line and I usually do a control V. Okay, so we've got the whole command including the period. Okay, what does the period say? Well, um, here's what this uh, command says. It says, run this piece of uh, Django uh, uh, code, which initializes a project, uh, to the start project function. Make the configuration subdirectory, make that be called my site. Okay, so force it to have a different name. And then put this stuff right in the directory where we are now. That's what the dot says. Okay, so now we're just going to hit enter. Sorry, enter. Where's my enter? Oh, there it is. And, uh, oh, I've made a mistake. And how I, I make it, well, you know what? We're, we're in the virtual env called base. It doesn't include uh, Django. So it just said it doesn't know uh, Django admit exe. Well, because we're in the wrong uh, virtual env. So we're going to use the conda command line. We're going to use the conda uh, command line tool in order to change the active virtual env. So let's type in conda space activate space uh, e4 django underscore girls underscore tutorial enter. And now we can see over here uh, in the parens e for Django girls uh, tutorial. Now we've got Django uh, uh, queued up. Okay, so I could I could go and cut and paste that um, that text again. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the up arrow on my keyboard. So I uh, hit it once. I go to the last. Um, I go to the last uh, command, make this a little bit bigger. Uh, so I did the up arrow once. I went to the last uh, command, up arrow again. There's my Django admin.exe start project my site uh, dot. So now I'm going to press enter again. And I just got a prompt again. So that worked. So how am I going to know? Well, let's do a DIR. OK. And um, uh, let's look at what we have here. Now, I'm not seeing all the subdirectory stuff, so I'm a little um, a little disappointed. <laughs> okay. Oh, here it is. I, I've been working over on the Mac and then I, I've, I've had, a, I've forgotten how, how to read these, uh, directories. Here it is. Okay. So what's in the sub, uh, what's, what's in the directory, uh, Django girls? Well, we've got pointers to the current and and the, and the parent uh, directory, but we've got the we've got the script for manage uh, .py. We have the sub uh, directory for my site. Those are the things that we were looking for. Okay, good. Now, 
if we're in the Django Girls uh, tutorial, if we uh, come back here, okay, we're going to do a bunch more stuff um, at the command line. Like, we're going to change the settings in the configuration uh, directory. Now, we're using the tools that we're using in this course, we're going to do that with uh, PyCharm. Okay, so this is the beginning of the time where you're going to adapt the way you do the tutorial to be consistent with our tool set instead of the tool set that they're uh, uh, promoting at the Django Girls uh, site. And I've been teaching this course for a little over four years, and my students always seem to be able to adapt at this point. So I'm expecting that you're going to be able to do that too. If you have some trouble, well, I'm available to help. Okay, so before we change the settings, let's us go and get PyCharm started. Okay, and um, I don't think we're going to need the command line for right now. So let's just uh, type exit and it goes away. And let's start uh, PyCharm, because that's where we're going to prefer to work from here on in. OK. Uh, and let's say we want to navigate to it. Like, I I could click on this last entry, but this was the last time I created this. So let's, let's click on Open. OK, and now we've got to find our way uh, to um to the project so where are we well we want to go uh to users and trainer one then i think we want to find uh documents and i'm a little bit lost here uh c so we're at C, Users, Documents. Oh, there it is. Uh, again, I'm just having a hard time seeing what's here because I'm used to what this looks like over on my Mac. So I, I want to go to IS-439 Projects. I want to open up that and Django Girls. So I just want to highlight the name of the project, the directory that holds the project. And then I want to click on OK. And do I want to trust the project? Yeah, I'm going to click this uh, checkbox to say I always want to trust my projects. And it's going to load it up. OK. Now, are we ready to work yet? No, we're really not. And the reason that we're not is is that a PyCharm, the PyCharm, uh, this project is hasn't been configured in PyCharm yet. Now, later on in the course, we're going to create all of our new projects using uh, PyCharm, and they're going to be most of the way uh, configured when we do that. But you'll remember, we created this directory structure at the command line, OK? So there's no PyCharm, PyCharm configuration metadata in this project at all and we've got to go and do that so how do we do it well go up to the menu click on file and then settings and that comes up and we're going to have to configure in two different areas the first one go down oh, a little bit more than halfway to a project django girls and click the click the little uh, triangle and then from the sub uh, grouping python interpreter okay and it says that we we, we have a python 3.8 interpreter but we don't see the name of our virtual environment here so it's not really configured um, the way that we want and if we look down in here we're not going to see django OK, and do we see Django? We're looking for DJ. Nope, no Django. So this isn't what we want. So we can go to the drop down over here and click 
and see if we say E for Django Girls uh, tutorial. And we do, all right? So we can just pick this. But I want to say maybe on your machine, okay, when you click the drop down, you don't see this. Okay, so what do you do if you don't see it? Well, go further to the right and click on the gear icon and then choose add. Okay, now so we want to add a virtual environment and choose it. So over in the left uh, panel here, uh, we want the second entry, we want a conda environment. And then on the right uh, panel, we don't want to create a new one. So that's not the radio button we want, but the lower one, we want an existing environment. And then uh, there's a drop down, and again, we can go and, and pick, okay? And we might easily see the name that we're looking for here, okay? But just in case you don't see the name that you're looking for, where do you go? Well, you go to the right, to the dot, 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 okay? And um, uh, now we got to find our way to our virtual environments. Okay, so if you know where your virtual environments are on your machine, well, just navigate uh, to them. If you don't remember where your virtual environments are, um, the trick that I use is I open up Endaconda Navigator. So let's let that open up. A little bit slow to open. I promise it's going to open up. Still taking its time here. Okay. I just had to, to click on another icon and then go to environments. Okay. And then click on the, uh, the virtual environment that you're looking for. And right after you click, you want to be looking down here, right down here. As soon as you click on that, you're going to have in this little information window here, it's going to show you the path to the virtual environment. So you look down here and I'm going to click. And we can see C users, trainer one, Anaconda three, ENVs. That's where it is. C users, trainer one, and a kind of three M's. Okay. So let's, uh, oh, I went to the wrong one. So let's, uh, let's get our virtual machine up again. Uh, there it is. Okay. Uh, all right. And then let's, uh, I wanted to uh, close this. That's what I wanted to do. So, uh, okay, so users, a trainer one, Anaconda three, there it is. Okay, ENVs, and I want to find the one that I want, E for Django Girls tutorial. And I'm going to open it up and uh, I want to go down, uh, so not in one of the sub uh, directories, but right out in the main directory, I want to pick Python EXE. And uh, Python EXE is a, uh, is, is really a link uh, to the real uh, Python interpreter. So, in the current semester, that's uh, Python 3.8.12. So this is a this is a kind of a shortcut uh, that points to the real uh, Python. So we hi we highlight uh, Python EXE and, and we click OK, and uh, that should do it. Okay, and you can see here that it says this is the Python EXE that's in. E for Django Girls uh, tutorial. Are we ready to click OK? Not yet. Okay. 
click the box that says make available to all projects this is what will help it start showing up uh in these kind of drop downs okay and then click okay are we done yet no we're not done yet we need to configure this languages and frameworks so come down here and click the triangle next to languages and frameworks and then pick django okay so there's uh i think four things that we need to check first of all the checkbox enable django support okay here it's already checked but if it was unchecked it would look like this it needs to be checked okay then django root project has to point to the directory that holds our project this is the right one okay then settings has to point to uh, the sub uh, directory that holds our configuration and metadata and then within that to settings.py that's correct and then manage script has to point to um, uh, the manage.py uh, script within our uh, project and that one's uh, correct as well so those are all correct I'm going to click OK. All right, good. Now, if we go back to um, if we go back to our um, uh, tutorial, uh, it's going to say the next thing we want to do is change the settings. So it's going to tell us some things in the settings.py uh, file that we want to check and make sure they have the right value. OK, now uh, where's the settings.py file? Well, it's within our project. It's within, with the, it's within this my site configuration uh, directory, and it's settings.py. So it double click on that, and it'll open up. OK? So this was uh, generated when uh, when we uh, generated the the project when we created the project at the command line, and it's got kind of standard entries in it. And what we want to do is we want to check them to make sure you know we want to uh, configure them a bit more. So uh, let's go look at the first thing it wants us to do. It wants us to check the time zone. Now, it says that we need an entry like Europe Berlin. For those of you in my class, we're going to use America slash Chicago. That's going to put us in the US central time zone. So let's do that. Well, I lost my virtual machine again. There we are. Sorry about that. OK, so let's go back to uh, PyCharm. Now, um, if you you are not good at finding these things by just uh, rolling through, you can use the find uh, function of the editor. But um, time zone is just right here. So we're going to type in America slash Chicago. All right, that's going to take care of that. And uh, in the PyCharm editor, um, um, you don't have to be explicitly saving all the time. Uh, when you make a change, you just have to click off of the, the line that you changed or that you entered or you deleted and click on another line. OK, I, uh, I try to click on a blank line. Uh, because I don't want to sort of accidentally click somewhere and hit a space bar and, or some other key and uh, corrupt uh, code. But that's all you have to do. Now, if you want to make sure uh, that your thing gets saved, I know when I was new, I, I didn't really trust it, but you can trust it. Uh, you could do a control S, right? That certainly would save it. So, okay. Uh, America, sh sh Chicago. If you go back to the 
if you go back to the browser and look at the next thing that we configure, it's language uh, code. And we're going to use en hyphen us for us English. Okay. And let's go and look what else we have to do. Um, okay, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to find this is line for static URL should already be in the file, but we want to add this static root after it. Okay, so it, it, this is the beginning of the thing where you see with this uh, tutorial is um, it's going to speed things up for you if you highlight these and uh, copy them. Okay. Now, if you copy every bit of code in the tutorial and you don't type in any, you're not going to learn much. But um, especially for these uh, configuration things, uh, this is a good thing to do. Okay. So we've got this. Let's uh, go back to PyCharm and we're looking for that static URL. Okay. That's there. And that's correct. And now I'm going to paste on the next line. I don't know why that did that, but it did. So I'm going to paste this on the next line. Okay, so I did that. So let's go back to this. Uh, this allowed host thing, we don't really have to change this, uh, okay? Um, you, you need this uh, change in order to deploy this application to Python anywhere. Uh, the, to test it using the development server on your machine, you don't need this. But let's, just in case somebody wants to go deploy it, let's take this version and copy it. Okay, and let's go back to PyCharm. Uh, and I know a loud host is up towards the top. Uh, why? Well, because I've been doing this for uh, five, six years. Okay, and on line number uh, 28 here, we have allowed host. Um, this empty uh, value will work for us if we don't have to deploy, but let's highlight it and paste over it. Now, if this uh, says, uh, where is this application allowed to run on the server? And it says, well, it's allowed to run on my machine on the default um, uh, port for web servers. Uh, well, it's, it's, yeah, it's the default port for my machine, 127.001. And if I deploy to Python anywhere, it's allowed to run in a subdomain of Python anywhere. Okay, so that's what that change does. We don't probably really need it, but I put it there anyway. Okay. Um, now the next uh, bit of the code has to do with secret keys. Okay. And we're not going to make the change. Okay. You would maybe want to make the kind of change that they talk about here if you really were going to deploy it. So we'll we might make these kind of changes uh, when we deploy our EZU app to Python Anywhere. But for now, um, the secret key that we have is adequate. So let's look for the secret key. That's up here. Okay. Um, and uh, if you look at the value, it says Django insecure. So I, I think they're thinking that maybe uh, uh, you want a little more secure secret key than this. Now, what does this secret do? Um, it helps Django um, defend against uh, cross-site request forgeries. Okay. Uh, and so it's important for this to be a uh, encrypted value. All right. And it's also important that it's not kept, uh, that it's not uh, publicized. Okay. So for instance, if you had an open source application where people could see your source, well, you wouldn't want to include the secret key 
in the source. Okay, but we're just going to keep the value that we have. Okay, that'll serve us fine for now. Um, set up the database. So there's a section here on how to set up the database. And uh, most people, when they're developing, they use this SQLite 3, and that's what we're going to be using. And we're not going to have to make any changes because it's already set up for SQLite 3. So let's uh, go look at that. So the databases are down here. OK. So that's configured for SQLite 3. That's just what we want. Um, uh, what other databases might we want to use? Well, when we go to deploy, to deploy we might want to use MySQL or Postgres or um, uh, Oracle or uh, something like that. But for, uh, for us, at this point, uh, what's already configured is just what we want. Okay. And then um, it uh, tells us that uh, before we start up the server that we're going to want to do, we're going to want to migrate. So we'll do that. So we're going to want to migrate. That's run under manage uh, type high. And then we're going to want to do a run server, which is under manage uh, dot pi. OK, so those are two things that are left before uh, to get the development server up. OK, so we've made all the changes that we need to, we need to make to settings uh, dot pi for right now. And again, you just need to click on a blank line. You need to click off of the line of the last change you made for it to save the change. So we're going to close that. OK. So um, the next thing we need to do is we need to run the manage uh, 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 .py utility script. And unfortunately, the easiest way to do that is broken in the Windows version right now. So uh, if it weren't broken, here's what you do. You would click on tools and then run manage.py task. OK, and it would pop up the window that we're going to use. OK, well, it turns out on, on Windows 10 right now, that's not currently working. OK, so let's uh, click on this. So we look at this, it has a bunch of error messages. It doesn't work. It didn't work a year ago. Why they haven't fixed it, I don't know. Um, but we're not going to use that. What is this? This is a really convenient uh, little window that runs the manage.py utility program such that we only need to type in the end of the commands. That's all. It's really a convenience, but it's a broken uh, convenience. So is there something that we can do? Well, actually, there is. What we're going to do is we're going to open up a little terminal in, in uh, uh, PyCharm. And it's going to be like we're working at the command line. OK, but we're working at the, at the command line from within uh, PyCharm. OK, so uh, it's, it's going to be closer to what is in here. OK, so for instance, when it does the migrate, OK, if you're working at the command line, you can't just uh, type migrate. You have to type Python manage.py migrate. So you say run Python, feed it the manage.py script, and then tell it to run the migrate command. OK, and then later when we go to start the server, Instead of just uh, uh, telling the little window that run is, runs uh, manage.py that we want to run server, since so that's broken and we're working in the terminal, we have to type in Python manage.py run server. OK, so let's show how that works. 
So uh, where is the uh, terminal? Well, you might find it in one of two places. If you look along the bottom edge, you can see a bunch of tabs here. There's a tab for a terminal. So if I click on terminal, uh, it opens up. Okay. But what if I didn't see that there? Okay. Sometimes you look along here and you don't see those tabs. Why that is, I don't know. But if we come over here in the lower left, there's a there's a stack of rectangles. And if we just hover over them, we'll get a list of all the things that we can open up. Okay. And one of them is terminal. Okay, so that's how we open up a terminal. Now I just want to point out that when we open up the terminal, the first thing that we see, at least on my machine, is Windows PowerShell. So this is not a standard command line terminal. This is a Windows PowerShell uh, terminal, and it's not what we want. Okay, now how can you recognize it? Well, it says Windows uh, PowerShell, but the prompt starts with PS. Okay, now how do you get from PowerShell and in, into the uh, command line uh, prompt, you just have to type in CMD. That's the name of the command line shell, CMD enter. And you'll see um, that, uh, well, uh, you'll see what we got rid of the PS. Okay, and this looks like a typical um, a command line uh, window because you can see the name of our active uh, virtual environment over here in parens. And then you can see that we're already down in the Django Girls uh, project uh, directory. Okay, and that all gets uh, configured for us because when we configured this project in PyCharm, it knew all the details of this. So when we clicked and said we wanted a terminal, it gave us a terminal, but it configured it for our virtual environment and it pointed us to our uh, project directory, which is pretty nice. So, um, According to uh, the according to the tutorial, we need to do migrate. What's migrate about? Well, migrate is about the following thing. Uh, every Django project has this thing called the model, and the model uh, is the internal representation of all the database objects. Okay, uh, so when we start a project, uh, we we get we get a new copy of the relational uh, database. Okay, and it doesn't know all the details of the database. So how can we get uh, Django to take this internal uh, database? model stuff and publish it out to the relational uh, database. Well, we tell it migrate. So you may say, you know, Kevin, we don't really have a database yet. You know, we haven't created a model. And I, 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 I would say, well, that's true of the stuff that we're going to build. But there's a whole lot of built in stuff. OK, so when we say migrate at this point in the project, you're saying take all the database information for the built in Django stuff and publish it out to the physical relational database. So let's us do that. OK, so uh, again, the thing to remember here is we're not in that uh, magical uh, PyCharm manage.py window because the Windows version of that, at least this year and a year ago, is broken. So we have to type in the whole thing. We have to say Python. I want to run the Python interpreter. And then we want to feed it manage.py. We want it to run the manage uh, 
utility script and then we wanted to execute the migrate command on the utility and we run that and we got the same thing so what we did is is we just migrated all these uh, all these uh, data objects that are part of this thing called the model and and we uh, published them out to the physical database okay let's start the the server so the server is the development server we don't use the same server for uh, development and for production so this uh, server that we're using is the django development server so how do we do that well we we invoke manage.py and then we type run server so i could type out python you know etc but the easiest way to do this is to go to your keyboard and press the up arrow okay so the last command had all that python manage.py uh, and just use the back arrow and back up over migrate and type in run server and enter and you're going to see that now we're running the server okay so it says uh django version 3.2.5 that's what we're expecting in the current semester using the settings in my site settings so we know where it got the configuration from starting development server i told you that's what it's called and then it gives us a link um to um uh, the browser page so if we click on that there we are so this is just the landing page for uh, an empty uh, Django application. And uh, you can see we have the release notes for Django 3.2. And of course, we're on 3.2.5, so that's the right thing. So that looks pretty good. OK. so. I think we're in pretty good shape. Okay. Um, now, let's let's look at a couple of things. Now, I just want to point out when you close your browser, you've you've closed your client. You haven't closed your server. Your server is still up. In fact, you can click on that link again, and it'll bring up the browser. Okay. Now. This um, this server is going to stay up until you stop it. Okay. Now, how do you stop it? Well, in the terminal, I think it, it tells you that you can uh, uh, you can quit the server with a control break. Now that's a uh, control C. So let's us just click in the window, then do a control C, and you can see it stopped the server. Okay. So let's start the server again. Again, I'm not going to type all that Python manage that pi. I'm just going to use the up arrow. And I've already got the run server command, so I'm going to um, enter that. And it's started the server again. And we can go right back uh, there. Now, um, one of the nice things about using uh, a PyCharm on um, PyCharm on Windows 10 is that uh, if you quit PyCharm without turning off your development server. Uh, it seems to turn off for you. I, I, this is a problem in in the Mac uh, version that if you quit uh, PyCharm, it'll just leave your server up, and then you you have to find it in order to kill it. But uh, here, even if we leave that server up, if we if we quit uh, PyCharm, okay, and we come back uh, here and we start uh, PyCharm again. And let's say that we um, uh, 
Oh, and it, it's gone. It kept the PowerShell up. Okay, so that's interesting. Okay, so again, every time you get a new copy of a terminal, you have to remember to type in CMD. Okay. And let's say, and then the up arrow won't work when you come back. It doesn't remember what you typed in your last uh, session. So now you're going to have to type in python manage.py uh, run server. And it's going to run uh, just fine. So that it's a really nice thing about the Windows environment is if you forget to stop your server when you stop uh, PyCharm, it seems to stop your server for you, which is quite nice. Okay, I like that a lot. Um, I, I wish that that, that you know that manage uh, that Py tool worked, but uh, I guess you can't have everything. Um, okay. Let's just uh, take a look here. Um, looks like I lost my my way to the documentation. So let's uh, let's go to tutorial DjangoGirls.com. Let's go back to where we were. So we were pretty far down. We were on your first Django project. I think we were at the bottom. Uh, yeah, we started the server. Okay, now, um, this is almost enough information for you to go through the rest of the uh, tutorial and and uh, be fine. But I want to show you one more thing. Okay, um, uh, in each uh, project, okay. Um, we may be making use of uh, the Django uh, authentication and authorization scheme. So Django has a built-in user scheme, okay, in which you can uh, define users and you can give them permissions. And so you can control access to your application. Okay, and so how do you get access to the users and their authorizations? Well, you'll see as you're going through the uh, tutorial. Let's uh, let's go back here. Um, you go to this built-in admin app by typing at the end of the URL slash admin. Okay, and you'll see you'll see the details on that when when they tell you to do it. And we're going to we're going to want to put in a username and a password uh, so that we get access to this admin app. Okay. Now um, we get in this uh, kind of problem that we can't even get into the admin app unless we have a user to get started. Okay, so we don't enter our first user here. Okay, let's let's uh, close the browser again, and let's go back and show you how you enter your first user. Okay, so we're gonna stop the server with a uh, Control C. Okay, and uh, the manage uh, uh, .py has a function called create super user. So we want to create a super user. Why? Well, because later on we'll be able to use that user to create other users in the Django admin app. Okay, so I think we can use the up arrow. Yep, okay. But instead of run server, let's back up over that and let's run create super user, all one word, enter. And it's going to suggest my username from this virtual machine uh, but I don't want that so the instructions to all your assignments are going to say you have to define a super user name tester lowercase so this is t-e-s-t-e-r and then enter okay email address we're not doing anything with that just enter again okay what's the password 
Okay, so I'm going to show you the password that we're all going to use. Okay. Uh, let me show you this. Okay. Huh. I don't seem to be able to make this bigger. Isn't that interesting? So, the way... Oh, I know why I can't make that bigger. Because we're not on the same machine. Sorry about that, guys. Um, well, here's what we're going to do. I can't, I can't show it to you big uh, easily, but it's going to be, uh, it's going to be the word I school UI. So little I, big S, I school, and then at the end of it, capital U, uh, capital I. Okay, so it's going to be I school UI in curly braces so left curly brace little i capital s c h o o l capital u capital i right curly brace enter and then we're going to confirm it left curly brace little i capital s c h o o l capital u capital i right curly brace Okay, so super user created successfully. Okay, so how could we test that? Well, start up the uh, development server again. So I'm going to use the up arrow. And instead of create super user, I'm going to do run server. Okay. And now I'm going to go to the client and it's open. And we're going to go to the admin app put slash admin at the end of the uh, URL. And now we ought to be able to log in with our super user, uh, username tester, all lowercase, and then the password, uh, left curly brace, little i, big S, C-H-O-O-L, big U, big I, right curly brace. There we are. And if we look at the users, okay, we can see that we have a user called tester. And you can look at when it was created. You can see that we just uh, created it. Okay. So that's uh, that. Uh, and so how do we log out? Well, we can come up here and log out. Okay. And then we can close that. Okay, so as part of each assignment that you do, um, um, uh, we who grade the assignment, we're going to want to go and we're going to want to look at using that uh, Django admin app. We're going to want to go look at uh, your database and information in it. And to do that, uh, we need to be a super user. So this is something that you're going to want for your own testing. And this is something that we're going to use when we test what you hand in. And so we're all going to define the same user, uh, tester, and we're all going to, the, we're all, all going to define the same uh, password uh, such that uh, it makes it a lot easier to test and nobody has to look up either the username that you use or the password that you use. We're all using the same one. Okay. Um, okay, so let's just go back. Uh, and I don't know how we lost that again. Um, maybe I just don't know how that icon works. It's been a while since I've been here on uh, Windows. Uh, so let's, uh, we're going to uh, tutorial.djangogirls, going there. So let's, let's look where we were, your first Django project. Then um, you can refer to the instructions to see what we're going to do. So we're going to cover Django models. I, I don't like the way this works. Django admin. Uh, we're not going to do deploy. We are going to do 
Django URLs. We are going to do Django views. Introduction to HTML. Well, you should know HTML, but if you're weak and you'd like to review it, that's good. Okay. One more thing that we have here. Django ORIM query sets. Okay. Now, this isn't a section that you have to do, but if you want to understand the Django uh, database functionality really well, you might want to do this uh, section. And in this uh, section, we're working at a console, okay? And they show you how to make this work at the command line, okay? And we're going to do something similar in PyCharm. Uh, okay, and what happens is um, you, you're you essentially running a, a Python console, but it's a Python console within your uh, PyCharm project, okay, or within your uh, uh, Django uh, project. So how would, if we wanted to do this optional section, how would we make this work in PyCharm? Well, let's just uh, take a look. Okay, so if we um, if we go here, we're in the terminal now. Okay, and I think we were in the uh, yeah, we've got the development server going. So let's hit uh, Control C to stop the development server. Okay, and uh, how are we going to how are we going to run this uh, shell? Well, we're going to do it exactly how they tell us to do it here uh, in the directions. We're going to run manage.py and the command that we're going to pass it is just shell. Okay, so let's look at that. Uh, so do I want to type in Python blah blah blah? No, I can still use the up arrow. And I'm going to back up over run server and type in shell and enter. And uh, here we are. So this, this actually uh, puts us in the same place that we would be if we did it the way that they said in the instructions for the Django Girls uh, tutorial. OK, and then what other things are there? Uh, there's a uh, dynamic uh, data and templates. Yeah, we're doing that. Uh, Django templates, uh, CSS. Again, you should know CSS, but um, there can be some review. Template extending, we're going to do. Extend your application, we're going to do. Django forms, we're going to do. Okay, what's next? Um, if in fact you want to do the the optional challenge exercise, uh, that's going to be we're going to get to that through what's next. Okay, we're going to go click on what's next, and then we're going to go to Django Girls tutorial extensions, and you're going to do some of the extensions. Okay, uh, I'll put I'll put the details of that in the instructions for the assignment. OK, now uh, with with what we went over here, you should be able to do the entire uh, Django Girls tutorial. Um, you are going to have to do a little bit more configuration before you hand this assignment in. OK, and there's another tutorial that I, I'm going to want you to play for that. but you should be able to do the entire, uh, you know, as much of the Django Girls uh, tutorial um, as you decide to do. Are you going to do uh, just the required part or are you going to do the optional part as well? And then there's another tutorial for you to play uh, in order to configure this and rename a couple things before you hand it in. Okay, and that's all. Sorry to be so long-winded, but um, there's a lot to explain here, especially because we're using a different uh, tool set. So uh, I'm going to say bye until next time. Bye-bye.